All right, so the next one here is uh, we're going to do encountering a predator. So what, what you can do if you're not avoiding, you're actually making some kind of uh, encounter with it. And, and, and then what are your choices? And we're going to break this up also into two videos because it's a little bit long. And so here uh, you encounter a predator, you have choices. And... Um, Fleeing is one, approaching, feigning death, signaling to predators, and fighting back. Those are, are your options. Um, and so here we have a mountain lion, a, a, you know, an apex predator. And um, in class, I think what I'm going to do is show you the video. And uh, we'll talk about it and, and some of the choices you have on fleeing and approaching or, or, or what you want to do. So we're going to talk about these things um uh in, in in the zoom section okay so fleeing um obviously you can run uh the problem is <laughs> uh, you better be faster than your predator and so here we have a cheetah and we have a let me see what we got there we got a springbok um no we have a thompson's gazelle in that one uh so uh what you need to know is that uh um, these guys are quick you know uh the cheetahs uh, known to run 60 to 70 miles per hour, depending on who you talk to. And then again, running, uh, you know, uh, uh, over hiding, running is, is if you encounter a predator, running is the one that most, most organisms do. Um, and so uh, we have to, to worry about flight initiation distance. So when do you start running? Um, you know, is it the sooner the better, the first thing you see it? Um, obviously on an open plane, like, like you're seeing here, uh, maybe every time you see it, running is not the best option. Uh, so anyway, there's this flight um, uh, initiation distance, and there's all these things that come into play that, uh, that you actually have to decide. Uh, distance to refuge. So if you're going to run, how far is my hole or forest I'm running into? Um, those kinds of things. What's the prey doing? Um, you know, uh, uh, often you're looking at the prey trying to decide, is it uh, in hunting mode? Is it just kind of cruising? Uh, did blood all over its face, it just ate, so it's probably not as big a threat. Uh, predator size and speed, uh, you know, you're gauging what is this thing? How fast is it? Um, can I outrun it? If I, can, if I can keep the speed of it, I can let it get closer. But if it's something like a cheetah that's very fast, I might need to get my ass out of there quickly. Uh, what kind of physical defenses do I have? Am I big? Am I, do I have thorns or a shell? And uh, what's my ability to hide? Uh, do I blend in pretty well? So if I just uh, hunker down, am I going to be okay? Uh, and then part of it is experience, is knowing kind of what that animal does and being able to deal with that. So all of these things come into play uh, uh, as a uh, predator comes up. Um, so, uh, I, I, wanted, I wanted to give you this example. It's pretty cool because you don't think of this. Uh, so here we have a red-eyed uh, tree frog, pretty cool little guy. Uh, it's the kind of the mascot of Costa Rica. Uh, and, um, obviously it can jump away and they do. Um, but what's kind of cool about this thing is you don't think of their eggs. They lay their eggs on leaves in, in moist conditions. The eggs can run, and I, I and I just love that. that. That's just you know you don't think of it uh, as being able to go uh, and take off, but these things get eaten by wasps and uh, also by snakes. And so what happens is they will hatch normally in six days. That's kind of what what they need uh, for development. That that would be ideal. But uh, what happens is the wasps and the snakes usually come in and eat like one at a time. Uh, and then they'll fly off and then maybe come back. And so what happens uh, is the saliva and the damage and all this triggers the other embryo in the eggs to develop quicker. So instead of in six days, they'll hatch in four. So technically that's fleeing. You know, you, we, we, we think of something running, um, but these guys are developing fast. Like, oh shit, I, I have, I've, got to, I've got to become a tadpole and fall off. Um, so kind of cool. And it does it uh, in both uh, the wasps and the snakes. And the cool thing about the snakes, they were trying to figure out, well, how, how is it um, that they know? And it turns out it's the vibration. Uh, the snakes, when they're actually um, 
eating the egg and actually coming up on them, uh, uh, the snake is uh, uh, causing the leaves to vibrate in a certain way. And they realize that uh, that causes a, a, an increase in um, speed of development. So really, really cool. All right, and so here we have uh, squirrels, and squirrels will do all kinds of things. Here's a rattlesnake, so they're kind of ganging up on them a little bit. And what you can see, and it's not a great picture, I blew it up too much, but you can see this one's throwing dirt. I don't know if you've ever seen squirrels do that. I still remember uh, we went to the Grand Canyon, me and my wife were eating ice cream on the wall, and this squirrel came up, and he's fatter than fat. Obviously, he's a beggar. Um, and so he came up to my wife and he wanted obviously some food. People feed him, we don't. Um, so he sat there and he looked at her and she kind of tried to shoo him away. She did this with her hand and it was a crack up. So all of a sudden there's dirt on the wall and he starts throwing dirt at my wife. Um, uh, so uh, he was not a happy camper. Um, but anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, and they will make a calls and we talked about altruistic and kin selection. All of those things do occur. All right, so um, one, of the, one of your choices uh, instead of fleeing is approaching. And uh, this is a um, Thompson gazelle. And again, springboks are also animals that will do this. Uh, and it's called stodding or pronking. There's a second term, but stodding is the one I learned. So, um, And the idea behind this is the animals, as they're running, they do this weird stiff-legged jump. Uh, and um, it's kind of a bizarre behavior. You would think that would slow them down, and it kind of does. Uh, and so they've, you know, they've looked at it. Why would they do this? Now, uh, before we get there, um, uh, talk about this. Uh, they'll approach cheetahs and lions, and they don't approach hyenas and wild Af African dogs. And that's something else I think I'm going to talk about in the Zoom. All right, so it turns out uh, they did studies, Gail Stott, um, the hunt is abandoned by the pres uh, cheetah more often than if they don't. So what we're looking at is why would you do this? Um, and uh, what we think is uh, there's diff different theories out there, but the idea is, hey, I'm healthy. Uh, you know, I, I'm doing this major jump. I'm not the one you want to choose, kind of that dilution effect. Uh, they also believe it might be warning others in their group, hey, uh, there's a cheetah around, you know, um, be aware, predators here. And so there's different concepts about this. Um, uh, looking at what happens is if they see a cheetah, they will actually walk toward it. And what they've found is the cheetahs read that as, okay, they know I'm here. Um, and they are less likely to attack. Again, group size is important. Um, as you, the, um, and especially if it's not just one, but the whole group approaching. Uh, because the idea behind this, they think, is these guys are, um, cheetahs are, um, ambush hunters. Uh, they want the element of surprise. They want to start getting up to speed very quickly. And, uh, and what happens is if the gazelles are walking toward them and looking at them and approaching them, the idea is, hey, we know you're here. Uh, that, you know, the element of surprise is not going to be there. So, so don't even think about it. And it seems to work. All right. Another one, and I do have a video of this, is this feigning injury. And there's lots of birds that do it. The, the local bird here is the killdeer, which is totally cool. Uh, we have them on campus. You hear them, especially in the uh, late afternoons. Um, unfortunately, these guys are not the smartest. They, they have this uh, uh, kind of what they call, a, a, uh, uh, they lay their eggs on the ground in sand and, and rocks and they kind of blend in. They, they call it a scrape. Um, and they, they have done this where they, they have laid eggs on the dirt road in, um, over by our maintenance yard. Uh, the big construction that was going on, they had to stall construction in the area for two weeks because these guys uh, laid their eggs. Unfortunately, ravens um, actually took the, took the eggs, found the, found the eggs. But, uh, but anyway, what they do is as you approach the nest, because it all blends in, the adult will fly in 
and kind of walk around and call and then it'll throw its wing out and kind of drag its leg it, it's doing this oh i'm hurt i got a broken wing come get me and then as the predator tries to go after the adult uh it just flies off and so the whole idea is trying to get away um or at least get the predator away from the nest and we'll stop the share and stop the recording